snow udah udah dia usaha siapa lagi apa kita This one is for distance viewing. You? Okay. Do you guys want to do the talk? No? Okay. I'm getting tired. Huh? I'm getting a whole picture to school. Oh, okay. That's a good guy. So, what is it? I've worked up here for a bazillion years. Um, I think it's 24 now. Wow. That tells you. And I'm only like 16, right? So, that's pretty weird. Not a mystery of science. Uh, so, this is the telescope for which the observatory was built between 1880 and 1888. Uh, it's a 36-inch refracting telescope, which means the lens through which the light passes is 36 inches in diameter. Okay? And uh, it is the largest working refracting telescope in the world right now. Okay? Uh, there was a 4-inch refract, uh, uh, a 40-inch refractor built in. 1898. Learned his father's trade, which was common in those days, which was woodworking, making furniture and stuff. And uh, when James Lake got into uh, his, his right around 20, 
he started wanting to do something else yeah, with woodworking. And he took an interest to piano making. So he got a job with a company that made pianos, I, think, I believe it was in Baltimore, and uh, uh, learned how to make pianos there. And from there, he worked there several years. Then he went to New York City and opened up a business uh, making pianos. And he did very well for himself. Uh, and then eventually, uh, he discovered that, uh, you know, he, he, he would notice that a wagon, he'd see a wagon on the street, and it would be carrying one of his pianos that he had sold. And, and so he finally one day started following one wagon to do that, and he was finding out they were going down to the shipyard, and, and they were being put on ships to South America. Right? And when he did talking, he found out that the, uh, uh, he found out that they were, buying his pianos in New York and reselling them in South America. Hold on, let me get these people in here. Closed his business and came to South America. And he went, ended up in uh, uh, Buenos Aires first. And he was there, he, he, spent, it, he spent in South America, he spent uh, basically between 1822 to 1847 in South America. And he, he had been originally in Buenos Aires, and during that time there was a lot of instability, political instability in, in countries in South America. Um, he ended up um, uh, moving, moving from Buenos Aires uh, to Valparaiso, Chile, and after about eight years or so, when things were getting violent and stuff, and then he went to Valparaiso, Chile, and he was there for a period of time, and then finally he, his last, uh, I think, Six inches in diameter. It's made of two elements that are mounted in one cell, and they are they are mounted with about a it's about a six and a half inch gap between the two. They work together to focus the light down here, and the little the little technology the little uh, the little eyepiece right here, the elbow that's facing downward. That is actually the eyepiece where you would look into the telescope. One of the amazing things we discovered: why is it facing downward? It's because mm -hmm. dust doesn't fall up. Okay, so we always point it down so there's no dust in it. Okay, it's just no, we didn't discover that. I'm sure somebody else figured that out. Right? I don't want to take credit, right? Let's see, see headlines tomorrow. They're lying up there. They didn't discover dust falls. Doesn't fall up. Uh, <laughs> no, they'll give somebody his name who did discover it. Uh, so anyway, so so the the floor here, if you look at the railings around the back there behind you and all around it, the railings are on this because this was built to move up and down, right? So, so if we're pointing a telescope low on the horizon, that end will go low, and this end will go higher, right? And which raises the eyepiece, right? So you can have a ladder, we use the ladders now uh, to get up to the eyepiece, right? But in the day, when this, which this, this floor was used to about four or five years ago, and it actually is run on hydraulics. It's a 26 ton wooden floor, and it raises, it can raise from where we're at now, it can go all the way up to this next level and stop anywhere in between to get to the eyepiece. So wherever you point at the telescope and get it in position, you can wow. raise the floor up to that location and you can stand there on the floor. Now, the gates are on the top, the railings are on the top, they open also, and you see the benches there. This used to be the classroom telescope, mm -hmm. right? in the day. It was also the research telescope, so they actually got hands-on stuff on the telescope. And so you have, there's pictures of all the students in all their like, formal, formal clothes sitting up there while the instructor is going, do, 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 all 
about how to work the telescope and all this kind of stuff. And the, the columns around the room here, there's, there's all these columns, and those are all counterweights for the floor that help make it easier to lift the 26-ton telescope, okay? Um, so so um, we don't use the floor right now because there is, uh, when they first put it in, the plan, they had options, and there were things what were called screw mounts, basically a big screw over here that was slowly turned, and there was three or four of them that would all turn together to raise and lower the floor. But in the day, they were so slow. And the astronomers said, no, we can't wait that long for the floor to move up and down. We want it, you want it observing, right? This is the one thing. So they used it, they used the counterweights, and this was hydraulically moved by four hydraulic jacks. Okay. They use the water from the back peak of the mountain. There's a three meter telescope over there on the back of the mountain. And uh, you can go over there, you can go, and that's a modern research telescope. It's, it's, modern, it's modern for the mountaintop. Uh, and, but it's, it's a typical design uh, reflecting telescope. And, and uh, it's, it's three meter scope, it was built in 59. And still, at one point it was like, you know, in the top 18 telescopes way back in the day, and now it's like, you know, 45 or something on the list of largest telescope. But it is a big modern research telescope we use all the time. And uh, if you look at that, behind that there's a hill that's the tallest peak because it blew this one down, um, but there's a water, but there's a fire lookout up there. I went under there to look at it, and uh, uh, if you want to see it, I can show it to you if you want to look. If you want to see it, <laughs> uh, but if you want to see something really neat, uh, a special test for you. And you can see, you can stay, crawl in there if you want. It's okay. We yeah. promise we won't lock you in there, right? Mm -hmm. You can see the writing on the wood. Oh, oh yeah. Really? Yeah. And what that is, that's a label off a crate. And they would, they didn't use paper labels because they just come off, right? <laughs> And they would burn the label on the crate. So if you look at the if you look at the label that's on there, can you see it on that piece of wood? Mm, I can take a picture if you get it. <laughs>